Hi everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Services, and on our channel we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. Today's technical requirement is, is we're going to take a look at NVIDIA's RTX A6000 and see how it stacks up against an RTX 3090. So let's see if this GPU sucks. So I want to discuss the topic of workstation GPUs versus gaming or GeForce GPUs. But before I do that, I just want to remind everybody to help grow the channel by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit notifications so you can be notified when I release new videos, and don't forget to visit the Discord chat server. And if you've been following our channel, you know that I've been doing a lot of benchmarking with GPUs and programs like Maya, Blender, 3D Max, Cinema 4D. So today we're going to dive a little deeper and see what is the performance difference between a card like the A6000 and an RTX 3090? So I hope I'm not breaking some sort of unwritten rule that, you know, reviewers aren't allowed to compare these two GPUs. But I think I need to get the data out there so people can make an informed decision when it comes time to purchasing a GPU. So there's a lot of YouTubers and tech reviewers that are giving their opinions on the difference between a gaming and a workstation graphic card. And there's a lot of people that still think that NVIDIA's GeForce graphic cards are not made for the creative workflow. And any tech reviewers out there telling you that a GeForce card is not as good as a workstation card is really doing you a great disservice. So please don't listen to anybody out there that's telling you that the GeForce cards are only for gaming. Yes, Nvidia does market them mainly for the gaming industry, but they make a really good and affordable GPU for the production workload. But before we get into the specs of each card, I just wanted to say that Nvidia is the only company that actually designs the workstation GPUs. And to be more accurate, they actually license it out to two different companies. There's Lead Tech and PNY, and they actually manufacture the workstation GPUs, but the design is totally by NVIDIA. But on the other hand, the GeForce graphic cards are actually licensed out to many different vendors or AIB partners. These partners can actually take the reference design and alter it in any way they want to get higher clock speeds or maybe a larger cooler. But the underlying technology is still designed and or approved by NVIDIA. So you also might be thinking, well, don't the workstation GPUs come with a studio-ready driver that's designed to work in programs like Maya, AutoCAD, 3D Max? And that was the case up until recently when the RTX 3000 series got released. What also came with that was studio-ready drivers for all the GeForce lines of GPUs. And another question you might be asking is, well, aren't the studio-ready drivers ISV certified to work with these programs? And yes, they are. But that doesn't mean that they leave out the bug fixes in the GeForce Studio Ready drivers. Just check out the release notes. If you look at the release notes, you'll notice that when they release the Studio Driver for the Workstation graphic cards, they also do the same bug fixes in the GeForce graphic cards. So when I was doing research for this video, I was looking for YouTube videos or tech review sites who are actually doing comparison between Workstation GPUs and GeForce GPUs. So I even found a few review channels that are telling their viewers that these high-priced workstation graphic cards are the only graphic cards you can use to do high-quality work. I'm not saying that the A6000 sucks or any of the workstation graphic cards suck. They do have their place in the market, and NVIDIA really wants you to buy these more expensive GPUs. But I've worked in a few major studios, and they didn't have any workstation GPUs in the entire facility. So all of the artists were using GeForce GPUs in all of their workstations. And these are studios that were working on projects like the Transformers or Star Wars Episode Seven as well as The Mandalorian. So I'm sorry I have to say this, but I think that all of this rhetoric about GeForce graphic cards not being as good as workstation graphic cards is total bullshit. and let me show you why. So let's start off by just examining something like the RTX 3080 versus the Quadro 8000. The Quadro 8000 was the top of the line workstation GPU from the last generation. The RTX 3080 has 50% more CUDA cores than the 8000, and the RTX 3080 is using the third gen tensor cores. So when it comes to just playing raw compute power, the RTX 3080 outperforms the 8000 by quite a bit at a fraction of the cost. And remember, the RTX 3080 isn't even the top of the line GeForce card. So the specs you're looking at on the screen right now are for the Founders Edition RTX 3090 and the NVIDIA designed but PNY manufactured RTX A6000. So both GPUs are made of the GA102 die, but the RTX 3090 has 10,496 CUDA cores, while the A6000 has 10,752 CUDA cores. For tensor cores, we have 328 for the RTX 3090, and the A6000 has 336. For the RT cores, we have the RTX 3090 having 82 and 84 for the A6000. For the base clock speed, we have 1395 megahertz versus the 1445 megahertz. And the boost clock speed is 1695 versus 1860. So there's a bit of a difference when it comes to clock speeds of these two GPUs. 
So for the memory specs, the RTX 3090 has 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X, while the RTX A6000 has 48 gigabytes of ECC memory that is GDDR6. The memory bus speeds for both GPUs are the same at 348 bits. On paper, the RTX 3090 looks to be a lower spec card, but it does require 50 more watts than the RTX 6000s. So the MSRP on this NVIDIA RTX A6000 workstation graphic card is about $4,650 US, where the MSRP on this RTX 3090 is about $1,499. Now before people start putting comments in the section below, I know you can't find this graphic card, the RTX 3090 at $1,500 US dollars. It's probably going for twice that price, but I have to just have some sort of price comparison so that we can you know, judge the cost of both of these cards. So let's get down to benchmarking these two GPUs to see which one's gonna come out on top. So I've downloaded some of the standard benchmark scenes like the Blender BMW and Classroom, as well as downloaded a few scenes that are gonna be able to harness the kind of power that these two GPUs can provide, something that's gonna simulate more of a production environment. So I've already completed all of the rendering for the RTX 3090, and now I have the A6000 installed in the workstation. So this one here you might recognize as the standard Blender scene with the BMW. So we're just gonna go up and click Render. And while that's rendering, I just wanted to say that I've downloaded the scenes from the Blender site. I've made no changes to them whatsoever. So the drivers that I was using was the Studio drivers that are available for the Quadro card, as well as when I was doing the RTX card, I was using the Studio Ready drivers for the RTX cards. And that's rendering very fast, and it finished in 20 seconds. So 20.4 seconds. The RTX 3090 finished it in 20.9 seconds, so a 0.5 second difference. So Plus or minus uh, with error factor, I'd say they're rendering at about the exact same speed. So the next render scene we have here is another classic benchmark from Blender. It's the classroom scene. So we'll click render on that one. And while that's rendering out, I just wanted to talk to you about the workstation that I'm using. So I'm using the Lenovo P620 Threadripper Pro workstation. It's a 32 core with 64 threads. It has 128 gigs of RAM in it. So I wanted to do the exact same test and use the exact same workstation for both the RTX 3090 as well as the A6000. So that render is complete and for the A6000 it rendered in a minute and two seconds. On the RTX 3090 it was a minute and three seconds. So so far these GPUs have been very even as far as performance goes. So here we have the junkyard scene from Blender. This is another standard benchmarking scene. But I have gone in and I've turned on the denoising and I've set it to optics. And we'll hit render. So that render is complete and it's rendered in about 29 seconds on the RTX A6000 and it rendered it in 29 seconds on the RTX 3090 as well. So one of the other things I wanted to check out with the GPU itself was what kind of performance we have moving around inside the actual interface itself. And as you can see here, it's rendering pretty quickly. I've turned on denoising, of course, for the viewport and we'll set that to optics. And you can see as you zoom in, it's rendering it extremely fast. I wouldn't say real time, but it's Again, the interaction and what you can do with this GPU is just outstanding. You can zoom right into things like this jar and you can see how quickly it renders that out to its a pretty clear image. So it's giving you about 95% of what the production renderer is gonna look like right in the viewport. So now that we've seen how both GPUs work in Blender, let's take a look at Maya and see what the performance is like. So here I have Maya 2020 open and this is a scene that's supplied by Nvidia, but it's using the Redshift renderer. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna hit the render button. This takes about nine or 10 minutes to render and it's something that can utilize these power in these GPUs a little bit more. It's gonna use a little bit more of the VRAM as well as the processing power. So while this is rendering, I wanted to show you a hardware utility that I use all the time. It's CPU ID or Cupid as I call it. And it's a great way of just seeing what resources are being used when you're rendering out. So you can see here that we're using about 91% of the GPU and about 85 or 89% of the memory of that GPU. And you can also see the amount of bus traffic that's being used. So it's very low utilization of the actual traffic to the GPU. So once the actual scene has been loaded into VRAM, it's just using the GPU to do all the processing. So the render is finally complete in Maya using Redshift with the A6000. And it took about nine minutes and 37 seconds to render that image out. With the RTX 3090, it took nine minutes and 19 seconds. So that's within 1% or within a margin of error. So I'd say they're still pretty close as far as rendering performance goes. So we have one more software package that we're going to take a look at today, and this is Cinema 4D, and it's version R23. So we're going to take a look at how it renders with Redshift with a scene that was released by Disney, you know, in 2018 or so, and an artist named Darby Edison, who has converted this over to Cinema 4D. So this is by far the most complex or the hardest scene to render, and it takes somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour to render on, depending on which GPU you're using. So we're going to render to the viewport, 
and we'll come back and we'll see what it's like, what the times are like when this is done. So this render is complete in Cinema 4D using Redshift and the RTX A6000. And it completed that in 26 minutes and 39 seconds. On the RTX 3090, it was 58 minutes and 43 seconds. So it really shows you the difference that all that extra VRAM can do for a complex render like this. And so for my original question, you know, does the A6000 suck? Uh, no, absolutely doesn't suck. It does come with a high price tag and it is required, you know, when you're doing certain kind of workloads. And other cards like the A4000 is a fantastic card for like animators, for instance. It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's pretty much comparable to an RTX 3070. But with all that extra VRAM, you have a lot of memory where you can cache your animations into the GPU itself and it's gonna speed up your workflow as well as productivity. So just to circle back for the reason why I made this video, I just wanted to prove that the GeForce graphic cards were just as good as the workstation graphic cards in some use cases. So we've proven today that if you need a lot of VRAM, you're gonna to need to buy something like the A6000 with 48 gigabytes. But as another option, you can actually use two RTX 3090s with the NV link and connect the two cards together because by combining them together, it actually pools the memory and you would get 48 gigs of VRAM across two GPUs, plus the extra processing power of the second GPU. So if any of my viewers have any tests that they'd like me to do with the A6000, just leave it in the comment section below. I always like to get feedback from all of my viewers and I do respond to every comment for all of my videos. So that'll about wrap it up for this video, but before we go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, hit notifications, visit the Discord chat server, there's a link in the comment section below. I really enjoyed doing this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.